you'd like to join the classes live in the masjid, then click on the link below. Inshallah, it will take you to a telegram group that has the details of all the class timings, the dates, the days, the addresses and the locations of the masjid. So click on that link and hopefully we'll see you there inshallah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al anbiya wal mursaleen Nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathiran amma ba'd My dear respected brothers and sisters we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us in the house of Allah azza wa jal to revise knowledge together the very famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said Man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqiru fi al-deen Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for, He gives him al-fiqh. He gives him al-fiqh in the religion. And al-fiqh in the language, my beloved brothers and sisters, is to understand, right? And to narrow it down a little bit more, it is to understand inherently, right? Others, they say, فَهْمُ مَعَانِي أو فَهْمُ مُرَادِ المتكلم. To understand that which the mutakallim, the one who's speaking is saying, all of this is that what al-fiqh means in the language, the linguistic meaning of that. Then you come to the technical meaning of al-fiqh. The scholars, they mention a ma'na that is aam, a very general meaning of al-fiqh. Shaykh al-Islam al Taymi rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, al-fiqh hu fahmu ma'an al-amri wal-nahi liyastafsir al-insanu fi deenih. It is to have knowledge or to understand the commandments and the prohibitions of the legislator so that you may gain insight in the religion. So that you may gain insight in the religion. Right? A lot of time when the term fiqh is thrown around, that which rushes to mind is what? The fiqh that you study of tahara, salah, siyam, and so on and so forth, right? This term al fiqh encompasses brothers and sisters right all the commandments and prohibitions of the sharia all the commandments and the prohibitions of the sharia this is how al-fiqh was used early on later on it became known later on it became known for that which we study today of tahara salah siyam why am i mentioning this hadith and all these technical terms if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you he gives you that understanding he allows you to understand the commandments and the prohibitions that will lead you to Al-Jannah, right? Also, Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi says, كُلُّ مَنْ أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا لَا بُدَّ أَنْ يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Every person that Allah Azza wa Jal wants good for, He must give him an understanding in the religion. He must give him an understanding in the religion. And then look what he says, Whoever Allah does not want good for, فَمَنْ لَمْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا Allah will not give him the understanding of the religion. So the fact that you came here and that you're sitting in front of the board with your pens and your papers ready to study, Wallahi shows that Allah Azza wa He handpicked you out from amongst millions. He handpicked you out from amongst millions, right? You could have been doing all sorts of things, right? This evening, not be up to good. May Allah Azza wa protect us from evil. Ameen. So we are here, inshallah ta'ala, hoping to study Al-Fara'id. Al-Fara'id, my beloved brothers and sisters, which translates to be the law of Islamic inheritance. Okay. It's a topic that has been abandoned, boycotted, and forsaken. Would you guys agree with that? Do you hear much about Fara'id being taught? It's one of those topics, one of those sciences that has indeed been abandoned, right? And we, inshallah ta'ala, will get the reward of bringing life to this science that has indeed become unknown to many, right? And inshallah ta'ala, we will discuss the 10 introductory points to every science. Every science, my beloved brothers and sisters, when studied, the scholars, they normally mention 10 introductory points, which can also be put, which can also be put as the 10 building blocks of literacy. The 10 building blocks of literacy, right? 10 points. 
for whatever science it might be, even when you're studying medicine, these 10 points come in extremely handy. So that you have an idea of what you are studying, right? You have an idea of maybe where it will take you and so on and so forth. Okay? The poet, he says, إِنَّ مَبَادِئَ كُلِّ عِلْمٍ عَشَرَ إِنَّ مَبَادِئَ كُلِّ عِلْمٍ عَشَرَ Some people say مَبَادِي إِنَّ مَبَادِئَ كُلِّ عِلْمٍ عَشَرَ There are 10 introductory points for every science. الْحَدُّ وَالْمَوْضُوعُ ثُمَّ الثَّمَرَةِ Right? الْحَدُّ وَالْمَوْضُوعُ ثُمَّ الثَّمَرَةِ وَفَضْلُهُ وَنِسْبَةٌ وَالْوَاضِعِ وَالِسْمُ الْإِسْتِمْدَادُ حُكْمُ الشَّارِعِ مَسَائِلٌ وَالْبَعْضُ بِالْبَعْضِ اكْتَفَى وَمَنْ دَرَ الْجَمِيعَ حَازَ الشَّرَفَى So what are these 10 points? Let me inshaAllah ta'ala stand up and write these 10 points down inshaAllah ta'ala. The mic, everything is okay, right? Is that on? Okay. So what are these 10 introductory points for every ilm? For every science. The first one that the poet mentioned is Al Had. Excuse my handwriting, brothers and sisters, yeah? I don't have the best one. I remember one time, I'll tell you guys a joke, right? When I started the University of Al Medina with my very weird handwriting, and they say many of the scholars of the past, they didn't have the best of handwriting. Even Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen and other men, right? The Ustad asked me to write something down. So I wrote it. And then I gave it to him. He looked at my handwriting and he said, Mahada, what is this? This is a type of handwriting that invites the jinn, the jinns over to the classroom. Because of it looking like no, definition. Everybody managed to pick that up? Everyone can see that it says definition, right? The first introductory point of this science, which is al-fara'id, okay, is the had, the definition, right? What is the definition of al-fara'id? The technical definition of al-fara'id, my beloved brothers and sisters, there is a number of Definitions when you look at the linguistic side of things, right? Which we'll leave to the side, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, well, which we'll leave to the side because there's a number of them. One of the meanings of al-fara'id linguistically means uh, an obligation. Faridatan min Allah ila akhirih. But put that to the side. Let's now, inshallah ta'ala, stand over the technical definition of al-fara'id, which is ilmun yu'rafu bihi. Man yarithu wa man la yarith. It is a science, it is a knowledge okay, that equips you with the tools to determine who inherits and who doesn't and the amount that has been allocated for every inheritor. Say that again. Ilmun yu'rafu bihi it is a science. Man yarithu wa man la yarith. Wa miqdaru ma li kulli warithin. It is a science. Ilm means a science or some knowledge. Yu'rafu bihi. This science will equip you to have the tools to determine man yarithu is the one who inherits wa man la yarith and the one who does not inherit wa miqdaru ma li kulli warithin and the amount that each inheritor is entitled to right and in the quran my beloved brothers and sisters we are given six fractions we are given six fractions can you see both me and the thing? Huh? In the Quran, there are six fractions. By the way, this is not a maths lesson. However, maths comes in extremely handy when it comes to fara'id. Right? 
It is a combination of al-qawaid al-fiqhiyya wal hisabiyya Legal maxims and also what? Principles, or should I say mathematical principles, which equips you now to be able to calculate accordingly what every individual is entitled to. What are the six fractions? Does anyone know? Ah, there are fractions mentioned in the Quran, brothers and sisters. Six fractions. Ah. He said one third. That's a three, by the way. Huh? Huh? A fifth. He said half. Huh? Quarter. That's three. One sixth. Huh? One eighth. Where'd you get that from? Hey? Are you half in the Have you memorized the Quran? Allahu Akbar. One eighth. What's the last one? One tenth. One tenth. I think you're guessing there, huh? <laughs> no, not one tenth. Huh? فَإِن كُنَّ نِسَاءً فَوْقَ اثْنَتَيْنِ فَلَهُنَّ ثُلُثَا مَا تَرَكْ Two-thirds. Pretty simple, right? These are six fractions that are mentioned in the Qur'an. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allocated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allocated for some. Huh. What's the evidence for the third? Let's see whose istidlal is on point here. Third. Where does it say third? Who can give me a verse from the Quran that has third in it? Sheikh Zubair. By the way, this is, mashallah, one of the imams of Masjid al Nawi for Taraweeh. وَلِأَبْوَيْهِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمُ السُّدُسُ مِمَّا تَرَكَ إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ وَلَدٍ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلَدْ وَوَرِثَهُ أَبْوَاهُ فَلِ أُمِّهِ فَلِ أِمِّهِ You can read it both ways. Jabir walked in, mashallah, he loves Qiraat Hamza. That's how Hamza reads it. فَلِ أِمِّهِ الثُلُث Are you brothers and sisters with me? It's mentioned in Surah An-Nisa. Right. Who can give me the evidence for half? Huh? Who gets the nest? Uh, uh, the wife? The, the, the wife. You like to give more to the wife, huh? <laughs> the wife is not entitled to half in any scenario whatsoever. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَإِن كَانَتْ وَاحِدَةً فَلَهَا النَّسْفِ If there is only one daughter in the equation, she takes half. As long as two conditions are met, which we're not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to confuse you guys, we're still right at the beginning. Right? Your brother Abu Taymiyyah, he has a daughter called Taymiyyah. The kunya was a very long time ago. However, when she was born, there was no option except to call her Taymiyyah, right? So I can become the real Abu Taymiyyah. <laughs> right? Taymiyyah hafidha Allah ta'ala, may Allah azza wa jal give her a long life upon obedience. She's by herself. What did Allah say? فَإِنْ كَانَتْ وَاحِدَةً If she's by herself, she takes half. These are all just benefits that you pick up on at this moment in time. We're still in the introduction. Right? She normally would take a half if two conditions are met. Which is عَدَمُ الْمُشَارِكُ وَعَدَمُ الْمُعَصِّبُ Al-Mushariq is another sister in the equation. If Taymiyyah has a sister, she's not going to take half. Likewise, if she has a brother, she's not going to take half. Right? So if I pass away, and I have no other kids, Taymi is going to take half of my money. You guys with me? There's only two conditions that need to be met. Don't worry about it if you don't understand these conditions at this moment in time. We're still just standing over the ta'rif. The reason why I mentioned these six fractions is because the ta'rif, the definition, which is the had here, the amount that each inheritor 
okay, is entitled to that Allah Azza wa Jal has allocated for. طيب. So we've taken the evidence for this and the evidence for that. Aya, quota. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us about the husband and the wife. The husband in one scenario will take a quota. And the wife in one scenario will take a quota. Right? Again, don't worry about it. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَهُنَّ الرُّبْعُ مِمَّا تَرَكْتُمْ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَكُمْ وَلَدٍ She's entitled to a quota if you don't have any children. Right? Put your hand up if you're married without kids. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. No kids, huh? If you die, how much does your wife get? Huh? She will take a quota. Okay, carved in stone. No two ways about it. The only condition that needs to be met here, if there's no kids in the equation. Taib. Thumun. What's the evidence for it? وَلَهُنَّ الثُّمُنُ مِمَّا تَرَكْتُمْ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لا. وَلَهُنَّ الثُّمُنُ مِمَّا تَرَكْتُمْ What's that? وَلَكُمْ نِسْمُ مَا تَرَكَ طيب وَلَهُنَّ الرُّبْعُ مِمَّا تَرَكْتُمْ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَكُمْ وَلَدَ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَكُمْ وَلَدٌ فَلَهُنَّ الثُّمُنُ If there is a child in the equation, how much does the wife get? An eighth. Okay. What's the evidence for sixth? Huh? وَلِأَبُوَيْهِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَ السُّدُسُ مِمَّا تَرَكِ إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ وَلَدْ Your parents, don't forget your parents, brothers. Huh? Don't forget your parents. They have rights over you while you're still breathing. And even after you depart from this world, they have rights over you. Is that clear? Both of them, in a scenario, they will take what? A sixth. But then there's a time, as Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, وَلِأَبْوَيْهِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَ السُّدُسُ مِمَّا تَرَكَ إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ وَلَدٍ If you have a child, they are both entitled to six. There's no children in the equation. This is when the third kicks in. The mother takes the third, and the rest is for the dad. Huh? The rest is for the dad. طيب. Two thirds, what was the eye again? Uh, what was the ayah that I mentioned earlier? فَإِن كُنَّ نِسَانٍ فَوْقَ ثُنَتَيْنِ فَلَهُنَّ ثُلُثَ مَا تَرَكْ If there is more than one daughter in the equation, right? Two thirds will be distributed. عَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ But your hand up, you're confused. I think that's most people. Don't worry about it. I hope you guys have written down these three, uh, sorry, these six fractions which will come in very, very handy later on. Right? Which will come in very, very handy later on. طيب. So that was the first of the ten introductory points. Is there something better than this? طيب. The second introductory point is what? Al-Mawdu'a Al-Mawdu'a Yani what subject matter this addresses? Okay, and by the way, all these 10 points that I'm covering Right? All these 10 points that I'm covering is for every science Like I mentioned earlier Inna mabadiya kulli ilmin ashara Al-haddu wa al-mawdu'a thumma thamara 10 points for every what? Science so you need to ask yourself, that which I'm studying, am I just attending because I want to take the reward of the sitting, which is perfectly fine, right? Or are you studying it because you want to understand it from every angle? People attend classes for different reasons, right? So now the mawdu' is the contents. Okay? The subject matter that it addresses, right? So we know that when we study Al-Fara'id, we ensure that the right amount is distributed. Okay? The right amount is distributed to those who are entitled. 
right? To those who are entitled. And this is what the faradi, and by the way, this term al faradi, it means a scholar in faraid. This is what he focuses on. Ensuring that the right amount reaches those who are entitled. Is that clear? الحد والموضوع ثم الثمرة ثمرة okay. is the benefits that you come out with you can even maybe call it the dunya benefits meaning the benefits that you will receive after okay, studying this science and when I say dunya I think it may end up giving a very negative connotation but what you will, right, immediately take away. What is it that you immediately take away from the benefits that you immediately take away? Okay, being able to distribute the inheritance accordingly. Giving people's rights. When I say to you now, so-and-so is known. So-and-so is known to give people their rights. Would this be something that is praiseworthy? Right? There is a person that people go to, huh, to seek their rights. Automatically, what kind of impression do you have of that individual? Positive one, sah? A faradi is that. A faradi, someone who knows how to distribute the inheritance accordingly, that's the role that he plays. Right? Ensuring that everyone's allocated amount is distributed accordingly. And without a shadow of a doubt, that is something azim. That is something great. Right? As I will mention, inshallah ta'ala, in a short while. So, Thamara, you could maybe call it the immediate benefits. What was it after that? In the Mabadi Kuli Elmin Ashara al Haddu al Mudu al Thumma Thamara, wa Fadluhu, wa Nisbatun wal Wadi, Fadl. The virtues, the virtues of studying the science. What are some of the virtues of studying the science? We're now speaking about the benefits of the hereafter. Okay, don't mix the two up together. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Right at the bottom of the third page in Surah An-Nisa. Tilka Hududullah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allocated the amounts to each individual, right? Allah Azza wa goes on to say, These are the limits of Allah. Tilka Hududullah. Whoever follows Allah and also his messenger. يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Right? Whoever follows Allah Azza wa messenger, Allah Azza wa will admit him into Al-Jannah. Right? That is your reward in the hereafter. This was mentioned straight after the different amounts were distributed. Is that clear, brothers and sisters? تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهُ يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And then, what does Allah say? لا huh. What does Allah Azza wa Jalla say after that? أُولَئِكَ وَذَلِكَ وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Right? And indeed, this is a great success. This is a great success. And the opposite was mentioned after that as well. وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَهُ يُدْخِلْهُ نَارًا خَالِدًا فِيهَا Right? Allah Azza wa Jalla says, whoever disobeys Allah and violates his limits, يُدْخِلْهُ نَارًا Allah Azza wa Jalla will admit him into the hellfire. This is not a light matter, brothers and sisters, which we will, inshaAllah ta'ala, come to know in a moment. So 
So how many introductory points have we taken? Four or three? Four, four, four. What's the fifth one? The fifth one is Nisbah. Nisbah. Which faculty does this type of knowledge belong to? Who can tell me? Which faculty does this type of knowledge belong to? Huh? Does it fall under the language, the sciences that are studied under the language? Because Arabic is very, very vast, right? Very, very vast. You have balagha, you have shi'ir, you have uh, putting lines of poetry together, you have balagha, you have all different types of uh, topics that are studied under the language, right? Then you also have what? Al-fiqh. You have so many different topics that are studied under al-fiqh. Like al-tahara, al-zakah, hajj, psalm. Fara'id falls under which? Does it fall under the science of al-hadith? Does it fall under fiqh? Does it fall under the language? Which one does it fall under? Fiqh. Okay? So it falls under fiqh. So nisbah is the faculty that it belongs to. Is that clear? Everybody get that, yeah? Say Allahum barik. Taib. Wa fadluhu wa nisbatun wal wadi'. This is number five, right? Number six. Al wadi'. Who is the originator of the science? That which we are studying now, al Faraid. I'll give you guys an example, right? Usul al Fiqh. Who was the first to put down Usul al Fiqh as a science? Huh? Al Imam al Shafi, rahmatullahi alayhi. Sahib al Maraqi, in his 1000 line poem, he says, Awal man alafahu fil kutubi, Muhammad ibn Shafi al Muttalibi, wa gayru kana lahu saliqa, mithlu ladhi lil urbi min khaliqa. The first one to put down. Usul al-fiqh as an independent science, or you might even want to call it a curriculum, right? For studying Usul al-fiqh was Al-Imam al-Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi. This is one for those who are Shafi'is. Huh? Imam al-Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi put down the science as an independent curriculum. Because somebody will turn around to you and say, Akhi, you guys are studying Usul al-fiqh, isn't this a bid'ah? Isn't this an innovation that was Introduced later on down the line. The Sahaba, my beloved brothers and sisters, did you, do you think that they needed principles like we do? Who can quickly give me a principle in Surah Fiqh about the commandment? What's the base ruling of a commandment? If Allah commands something, what's the base default ruling of that? Wajib. If Allah Azzawajal instructs you and commands you, the base default ruling of that commandment is that it's a must that you carry it out, it is wajib. You guys agree with that? Make sense? And then you have sunnah, which is not being imposed upon you. You guys with me? Sunnah, you have wajib, and so on and so forth. Yeah? The, we, the, re, the way we came to know about what is wajib and what is sunnah is through usul al-fiqh, right? طيب, the companions, they never had these principles. How were they taking in a lot of the information that the Prophet ﷺ was giving to them? Huh? Sorry? It was, inherently it was inherently known within them. Naam. They didn't need these principles. They already understood from the speech of the Prophet وسلم, because they understood Arabic that when the Messenger speaks a certain way, we should treat it like that. As for us, or a bunch of foreigners, right? We need principles to, huh? We need these principles to understand, okay, what is meant by وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Which means to establish the prayer. طيب, is it sunnah? Is it wajib? That's when I now go back to these principles. Okay, in Rasul al-Fiqh, كذا, the scholars, they mention that the base default ruling of a commandment is that it is a must that you fulfill. Make sense? Sahaba didn't need, no, didn't need all of that. 
They would hear the Prophet ﷺ speaking a certain way, using certain phrases and words, and they knew straight away, okay, this is wajib. Right? They knew the Arabic language very, very well. Tayyip. So who's the one that put down al faraid Does anyone know? Huh? Imam Shafi'i. I think you're too Shafi'i. Huh? Too Shafi'i. Huh? Man Yujib? Sayyid al Muharrad, yeah. Anyone else? Ashab Abu Hanifa. No. I think you're maybe referring to Al Qawaid al Fiqhiyya. Huh? Whoever gives me the answer, I'll give him a tenor. Come on, ya jama'ah. It's so simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go. I need to give you a tenor. Huh? No, I need to give you a tenor. Make sure you remind me. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took into his own hand. He took into his own hand the distribution of inheritance. Subhanallah. Wallahi, this shows the importance of that. If you think about it, right? A zakat, how much you pay of zakat? Is that mentioned in the Quran? It's mentioned in the hadith of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Of how much to pay on sheep, how much to pay on camel. There's a long hadith. The intricacies of salah, is it mentioned in the Quran? Amaraikum. Is it mentioned in the Quran? The intricacies, the, you know, details of a salah, what to say in your ruku' and is not mentioned. It's mentioned in the Sunnah. Allah Azza wa Jal at times speaks in a vague manner. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ You've been told to establish the salah. وَآتُ zakat, Pay the zakat. How much do I pay? Is it mentioned in the Quran? Not exactly. Right? You have to refer to the sunnah. And the sunnah, my beloved brothers and sisters, goes hand in hand with the Quran. Or them two, they go hand in hand with one another. You can't try to separate the two from one another. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ Indeed, we send down the Qur'an upon you, O Muhammad, so that you clarify it for the people. Is that clear? However, when it comes to fara'id, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it into his own hands. I'm going to give this amount huh, to this child who passes away. Sorry, to this child who has lost their father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allocated the half that my daughter Taymiyyah will take. If I pass away tomorrow, Allah took that into His own hands. Remember earlier we mentioned these six fractions, right? Allah is now going into detail of how much each individual should take. Imagine that, brothers and sisters. That wasn't done with the salah, that wasn't done with the zakat, right? Even when it comes to hajj, are the ins and the outs mentioned in the Quran? We have hadith Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, right? At the end, Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِتَأْخُذُ عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ so that you take the rituals of this pilgrimage directly from me. When he showed them how to perform the Hajj from A to Z. But when it comes to Faraid, right, Allah Azza wa Jal took it into his own hands, distributing the ins and the outs to those who are entitled. Is everything only just mentioned in the Quran? No. You have the Sunnah as well. You have some of the statements of the Sahaba, especially now when you come to the topic about Jaddu Ma'al Ikhwa, the grandfather with brothers, right? It's a topic that we will maybe come onto right at the end. It's a very tense one. Type. We are on number six, right? What's number seven? Number seven. Al Ism. Again, brothers, excuse my handwriting. It's not the best. What's the name of the science? Many Arif.
But I know normally I ask questions to catch you guys out, right? But not everything, huh? Right? It's a trick question. Something is very simple. What's the name of this science that we're studying? Ilm al Mirath, Ilm al Faraid, Fiqh al Tarikat, right? Ilm al Faraid, the knowledge of al Faraid. Ilm al Mirath, Mirath, similar meaning, right? Or they say the fiqh of tariqat, the fiqh of that which has been left behind. Very, very simple. By the way, how much does Taymiyyah get if I die tomorrow? Huh? Others. Taymiyyah is maskeen. She's very, very innocent, brothers. You guys trying to deprive her from now? He said, oh, a quarter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَإِنْ كَانَتْ وَاحِدَةً فَلَهَا النَّصْفِ If she's by herself, she takes how much? Half. She has no brothers and no sisters. May Allah Azza wa Jalla preserve her. You guys with me? How many conditions that we say? Let's see who's maybe two over the two. When does she take half? If you guys are picking up on these kind of things at this stage of the course, then Allahu Mubarak. Because this is something that we're maybe going to take huh? third, fourth lesson. Ashabun Nusf will go into. Those who are entitled to half, those who are entitled to a quarter, those who are entitled to a thumun, an eighth, two thirds. We'll go on to all of that. But what was the two conditions I meant Just as a quick benefit? She's by herself. What does that entail though? No siblings, meaning no sisters, which is Adam al Musharik, Adam al Mu'asib, she doesn't have a brother. Because if she has a brother, it will be a ratio of two to one. There's 300 pounds in the kitty. Huh? How much does she get? 100 pounds, he takes 200 pounds. Okay, don't worry. That's what Falid Dhakari Mithra Hadil Unthayin means. Good. What number are we on? Eight. الاستمداد الاستمداد الله this is horrible الاستمداد did everybody get that yeah الاس this is a سين تا ميم دال ألف دال yeah Anyone knows how to teach khat? Handwriting, please let me know. Huh? Al-istimdad, which basically means where this science has been deduced from. Where has it been deduced from? The Quran, good. Sunnah, what else? Athar of the Sahaba, the ijtihadat. The Sahaba at times they tried to find the right answer. Right? Okay? This is why you find Zayd ibn Thabit. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Right? Some of the companions, they had views on certain aspects of the fara'id. Is that clear, brothers and sisters? Also, Al Qiyas. It's also taken from Al Qiyas, which is analogy. Okay? So these are the different proofs that are taken into consideration when rulings are passed in Al Fara'id. Number nine. Hukmu. What is the ruling? We can look at it from two different angles. Number one, Al-Amal Bihi. A. B. Ta'allumuh. Ta'allumuh. A. Acting upon it.
learning it. Huh. What is the ruling of acting upon al-fara'id and how it's been distributed? So we have in the Quran that so and so should take a sixth, so and so should take an eighth. Taymiyyah, she's entitled to a half. What is the ruling of me actually acting upon it? Is it wajib? Is it sunnah? Is it a communal obligation, an individual obligation? Huh? What do you guys think? I can hear some conflicting information. It is fardu'ain, which means an individual obligation. هو ما طلب الشارع فعله طلبا جازما من كل مكلف بعينه. Is that which the legislator has requested from the one who is religiously obliged to carry out in an imposing way. It's being enforced upon him. He has to do that. Right? Every single individual who is religiously obliged, he must act upon it. Right? You can't just say, you know what, I'm in the UK, we have man-made laws, you know what, I'm going to give all of my, uh, uh, my houses and my valuables and I'm going to give it to my neighbour. And that's what I'm going to write in the will. Right? That all of it goes to my neighbour. Ma ra'ikum? Is that allowed? When he has children, when he has parents. Huh? La la yasruh. It is a must upon every single individual who is religiously obliged to act upon the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pertaining to inheritance. Right? It's very, very common in the UK here that one writes the will. He distributes his wealth however he wants. Right? After he's written up the will, he takes it to the lawyer. Lawyer stamps it. What happens if he dies tomorrow? This is how it will be implemented by the government. Or by law, should I say. And there are those, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, who have very good hearts. Right? Even though a will has been written, which states that all of the tariqat, everything that has been left behind, is to be handed over to his wife. I've come across cases, right? Somebody approaches me and says, my husband, before passing away, he wrote in the will that all of his wealth is transferred onto who? Her. Even though he has kids. In fact, he has many kids who are now being deprived. Should we go ahead with this? Is that fair and just? La. Laysa kadarik. I've come across scenarios as well, my beloved brothers and sisters, and this is min a'jabi ma yukun, right? A dead man is giving out instructions while he's not walking on the face of this earth. Ma ra'ikum? Is that possible? How is a dead man giving out instructions and he's in his grave? Huh? There are scenarios, brothers and sisters, right? A man's, about, a man's passing away. He writes in his will, I want all of my wealth to be transferred onto my wife. Oh, yeah. We already discussed that scenario. You know what he also writes in there? And when she dies, all of that wealth is transferred onto my daughter. He's giving out instructions and he's in his grave. Wallahi, when I came across some of these scenarios, it left me what? In shock. Are you guys with me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a law which distributes the inheritance accordingly. And that's the path that should be taken. طيب. What about learning the science of al-faraid? Fardu? Which means a communal obligation. The usuliyun when defining a communal obligation, they say, وَمَا طَلَبُ الشَّارِعُ فِعْلَهُ طَلَبًا جَازِمًا مِنْ غَيْرِ تَعْيِينِ فَاعِلِهِ 
is that which the legislator has requested or has instructed, should I say, right? The one who's religiously obliged in a manner that is imposing. Okay? Without specifying who he wants this to be carried out by. I'll give you guys an example. Right? إِذَا قَامَ بِهِ الْبَعْضِ سَقَطَ عَنِ الْآخَرِينَ If some people carry out this obligation, then the sin is uplifted from everyone else. You must ask a question. لا قدر الله Right? Someone's walking on this road. He's run into. Or he's run over. Right? By a truck. The man's dead. What if everybody turned around and said, so none of my business. Prophet Sallallahu said, Min husni islam al tarku ma la Right? Part of one being a good Muslim is to leave of that which doesn't concern him. You know what? I don't know that guy. I'm going to get on with my life. The other person does the exact same thing. The other does the exact same thing. All the Muslims just look at this guy. Well, I've never seen him before. You know what? I'm just getting on with my life. Ma hukma hadha? What happens here? Everyone bears a sin. Right? Allah just wants this done. Allah wants him to be taken off that road, to be washed accordingly, to be shrouded, and then to be prayed on. And then buried. It is what? A communal obligation. That if some carried it out, the sin is uplifted from everyone else. Alhamdulillah. Right? Some people carried out the obligation, it has been uplifted from everyone else. You should what? Be thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal that this is not lingering over your head. Likewise, a da'wah, giving da'wah to Allah Azza wa Jal. Huh? Ma hukmu? Fardu kifaya, Allah says in the Quran, Well, well, takun minkum ummah. Let there be from amongst you minkum here. In Malik rahmatullah alayhi, in his thousand line poetry, he says, بعض وبين وابتدي في الأمكنة بمن وقد تأتي لبدء الأزمنة. From the meanings of min is what? بعض. That there are from amongst you those who carry out دعوة in joining the good and forbidding the evil. That's also what a communal obligation. That if some fulfill this obligation, it is uplifted from everyone else. Make sense? Allah remember سبحان الله when I first went to Al Medina. I put the people into three. First category of people, those who just don't agree with me, so they'll show you hatred and animosity. Because they disagree with what you preach, and I fully understand that. I respect that. Right? Someone who says to you, right, to your face, listen, I don't like you. Because you're on this and that and this. I love that. There was a second category of brothers, right? Who I put under the category of husad, those who are just envy and sick. They show you a face and then they stab you in your back. They don't disagree with you on that which you preach, right? But they act like they're your friend and then behind your back they're what? Speaking about you. And then there was a third group of brothers. Some of them were even what? doing their PhD. I just joined, right? I just joined. However, they came across some of the videos and some of the discussions that we would have, some of the lessons. <clears throat> and with their humility, they would come up to me and say, Jazakallah khairan. May Allah Azza wa Jal reward you. And you can see that the ilm that he has studied has affected him, right? Even if that individual now, right, is lesser than you, Meaning, this person is doing his PhD and so and so just joined the Arabic institution. Right? For you to come and say to that individual, Zakallah khair, that really, you know, requires one to step on his ego. Right? And to be thankful. Some of them would say, Wallahi Zakallah khair. You uplifted the blame from some of us. The fact that you're giving da'wah, alhamdulillah. We're not going to be held sinful for it. Why did I mention this? Give you guys an example of what? Fardu kifaya. 
ya. Number 10. Masailuhu. Masailun wal ba'dhu bil ba'dh iktafa wa man dara al jami' haza sharafa. Right? The masail is the issues that it touches on. The issues that it touches on. Everything that we're going to be studying would fall under this 10th point. The issues that it will be touching on. Is that clear, brothers and sisters? Huh? Was today's lesson hard? Honestly. Huh? Sorry? Yeah, was the Mabadi or Ashara? In the Mabadi, a Kuli Ilmin Ashara, Al Haddu al Mondur, a Thumma Thamara, Wafodru, a Nisbetun will Wadi, Walisman is Timdad Hukum Shari, Masail will Bada Bil Badik Tafa, Wamandar al Jemi has a Sharafa. These ten introductory points that we took today, okay, on the science of Al Faraid, okay, the law of inheritance. Was it difficult to understand, brothers and sisters? Don't worry, if you didn't understand what I mentioned pertaining to the fractions, trust me, we will spend a lot of time going into that. I just thought I'd give you guys a bit of a taster, right? Give you guys the fractions that are mentioned in the Quran, right? And some examples of how much Taymiyyah would take, or what her grandparents would take, uh, very, very quickly. I have a bunch of brothers, let's see who's a Faradi in the crowd. Huh? I have both my mom and my dad. I have a bunch of brothers. I have a wife and a daughter. Who inherits and who doesn't? My brothers and sisters don't inherit. My brothers and my sisters don't inherit. You ex my brothers and my sisters. Huh? Tayyib, what about my half brothers? I have a bunch of half brothers. MashaAllah, dad. Huh? Allahu Akbar. Huh? So you're basically saying that some of my half brothers will inherit? How much does the dad and the mom get? They both get a suitors. What's the evidence for it? Huh? I had your faradi, Allah barik. And Umar as well. Sheikh Umar, Allah. Huh? Do you want to help out your brother Abdullah? Seems like he might need some assistance. You call a friend? Huh? Who wants to be a millionaire? Call a friend? Huh? <laughs> Friends there. <laughs> oh, 50 50. Should give 50 50. <laughs> hey, what's the evidence? <laughs> if there's a child in the equation, both parents will get a sixth. Then what about the wife? Uh, uh, she takes the thuman, right? Taib, who agrees with him? You agree with him? Agree? He said that my half brothers they inherit. Both of them will inherit. I have full brothers and I have half brothers. Huh? Excellent. That's the answer I was looking for. Take this as a principle. As long as your dad is alive, huh? As long as your dad is alive. To the rest of your brothers and sisters, they get nothing, absolutely nothing. How can you give something and your dad's watching? The way I remember my teacher told me was, your dad's looking at you, right? And you got your brothers and sisters there, your dad's looking. Do you want to take money and give it to them? This is from bad manners and being undutiful to your... And I never forgot that when my teacher said that to me. So as long... As your father is alive, all your siblings can be made to wait. Tell them, Assalamu Alaikum. Right? I told all my brothers and sisters this. None of you guys are entitled to a single penny huh, of what is in my bank account. I don't want any problems after my death. SubhanAllah, you know how the shaitan just comes in. I'll tell you guys something, right? Exam period. Sometimes I would get bored of exams. 
So what happened this year, I went into the family WhatsApp group and I decided to distribute or calculate, should I say, the inheritance of everyone in the WhatsApp group. <laughs> and I could see some, you know, were getting a little bit offended, like, you know, I'm calculating your inheritance. Yes, I'm calculating your inheritance. Because you, uh, huh? brothers and sisters, this is a very, very sensitive topic, right? I'm sure if I speak to some of you guys on a personal level, right, you will say that there is what? Issues with inheritance. I remember one of my teachers taught me, or well, told me last semester who taught me, right? He told me the inheritance of his grandfather was due when? I think a year or two after he was born. He's a professor now in the Jamia. Until this moment, he hasn't been distributed. Surprising? Wallah, it's not. This is why the one, my brothers and my sisters, who learns inheritance can save bloodshed. Wallah al azim He can what? Protect the people from killing one another. Because in certain countries, it gets bloody. Wallah al azim Because some of you guys nodding your head saying that, yes, that's the truth. It gets very, very bloody. Emotions run high. The shaytan gets to them. Are you guys with me? Right? All that love and affection that was between brothers and sisters goes down the drain. When money, issues rise to the table. Wallahi. One of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this topic because I heard that my great-grandfather he was a rich man had four wives and he used to take people on Hajj he had a ship he would take the ship to Somalia pick people up take them to Saudi Arabia for Hajj and then bring them back that's how he would make money right and what I heard later on down the line is when he passed away, of course his children, right? Different wives as well. You can already imagine when there are children from each wife, it doesn't always go down nicely. When these issues surface to the table, do you guys agree? And a lot of things happen after that. So I'm thinking to myself, if I learn this, I can save a lot of problems. And wallahi, fi'lan. Sometimes you see doctors, engineers coming to you, humble, right? Please help us. Years have gone by and we weren't still able to calculate inheritance and my family members, they don't talk to one another, right? They don't talk to one another. This is again from the benefits that we can take away from learning the science. You can save a lot of problems or protect your family members from a lot of problems, right? Imagine now, after you pass away, your wife and your mom, they're fighting with one another. Is it possible? Of course. If they're fighting amongst themselves now, right? They say one of the worst things that you could do is to move in your wife into your mother's house. What happens? In-laws or outlaws? In-laws or outlaws? There's some videos on my YouTube channel, it's called In-Laws or Outlaws. That predicament that you end up finding yourself, do I defend my mother and then my wife, or my wife and then my mother? I've been saying this for years. It is the ideal playground for the shaitan to destroy the family. When you have your wife and also your mother, and they might be two very good people, very good people, Allahumma barik. However, Brothers and sisters, however, brothers and sisters, right? The shaitan can easily get in between them, right? So my advice to every single person here is when you do get married, try to move her into a separate home. So if you can't solve the problems while you're living, after you pass away and they're fighting with one another, what are you going to do? Give out instructions from your grave? Like the example that I gave earlier, the guy who passed away, who's given out instructions, right? Even after he has passed away. Make sense? 
So to be able to calculate or to have all of this written down, carved into stone, if this was to happen, then the amount will go up or the amount will go down, comes in extremely, extremely handy. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Sisters have, have some questions. Okay. Sorry, sisters, I completely forgot about you guys. But I was, you know, really worrying about you guys before I came to the lesson. Huh? I was thinking about how are they going to see what I write on the board. Can you repeat four and nine, please? What was point number four? al haddu wal mawdu'a thumma thamara. Right? Wa fadluh. The virtues of studying the science. The virtues of studying the science. And there's no greater virtue, right, than al jannah. If by just acting upon it will get you to al jannah, brothers and sisters, then how about the one who actually learns it in order to prevent harm from taking place? To prevent harm from taking place. Wakafful adha. Right? Wakafful adha. One of the things that the Messenger talked about. Huh? Eliminating evil, holding it back. Someone who's learned the faraid, he protects the people from a lover of evil with his pen. Allahu Akbar. And how about this individual who's, who's, who's actually what teaching it or maybe what helping the people distribute their inheritance? If the one acts upon it against Jannah, then how about that person? High number nine was the hukum, the ruling, and we split that into two. The ruling of acting upon it, which we mentioned is Fardu'ain. And the ruling of, of learning it is a communal obligation. Fardu'ain means an individual obligation like Salah. صح? Communal obligation, a bit like funeral prayer, washing the deceased. طيب. And point 10. Point 10 is, what was point 10? The issues that the science touches on. Can someone give all their wealth to charity if they have no spouse or no children? We will come on to that, inshallah. What if the wife dies first, leaving husband and children? What does the husband get? We will cover all of that. Huh? We will cover all of that. This was just me huh, teasing you guys. When mentioning some of these Messiah, Aslan, you're not even meant to be mentioning it. At this stage of the inheritance. I think even me, because I was a little bit excited. I've been telling Abu when I was in the office, I'm so excited today to be teaching inheritance. What is the name of the book that we are studying and is there an English translation? Well, I don't have an actual kitab. Our brother Abdullahi from East London, may Allah Azza wa bless him, kept on asking me, right? Which book are we going to study? Huh? Which book are we going to be studying? Are we going to be studying al Rahabiyyah? Which is what? A poem on Al Faraid. Brothers, if I was to go through that poem, I don't think anybody will understand anything. Faraid is one of those subjects, a bit like maths. Where well, if someone just sat in front of you and started going through algebra and equations and multiplications and divisions, huh? A squared equals B squared plus C squared, and then kada wa kada wa kada, it goes into a lot of detail. How would you find that? I'm a very visual learner and I really, really struggled with inheritance. And you know why I struggled? We were studying Faraid, inheritance, while the COVID was going on. One of our teachers decided to come onto Zoom or whatever platform he was using, Blackboard, and he's just what? Speaking. Habibi, five in the morning, UK time. And you're not using a board. How are we supposed to understand? Right? I did not understand anything. So what? I deleted. That's from my... the subjects that I was studying at the time, which I had to postpone for another time. Right? It's a bit like maths. For I, my brothers and my sisters, you need the teacher to take you by the hand. A bit like somebody who swims, or somebody who starts driving. What well, if you say to him, I take the car? Man, are you cool? Huh? You throw him in the deep end. For I, it's like that. You need your teacher who's going to help you do the masail. Yeah?
So inshallah ta'ala, however I'm teaching, I'll be taking out from the books and explaining it, okay, using the board. We will have a lot of visual learning. Did you guys understand what we mentioned today? Or was it difficult to understand? It's pretty basic, right? Apart from the fractions and some of the calculations, don't worry about that. Okay? 